Hey guys, welcome to our channel Geek Talks. Today we will be talking about how to make our own programming language or to design our own compiler. So from years we guys are coding in C, C++, Java, Python, C H. But have you ever think of making your own programming language, designing your own syntax, designing your own compiler? If yes, so today we will be designing that here and. From the basics of how compilers are made, in which language they are written, how they are written, to real actually code it and make it run. So let's get started. So guys, let's get to the basic of compilers. Now the first thing is that we all see the common mentality that if there is a compiler of higher level language then it must have been coded in some lower level language. But that's not reality. In reality, most of the languages or modern languages that we know like C, C++, Java, Python, in fact basic also, all of them are self-hosted. Now what does this word self-hosted mean? Self-hosted means that all the latest versions of that compiler, like the latest version of Python has been coded in Python, the latest version of C++ has been coded in C++. To understand this better, let's move to the computer screen. So, as you can see, this is my source code in C++. To compile this source code, I need a C++ compiler. But this to compile the C++ compiler, I again need a C++ compiler, so it is creating a loop here. Don't be wasting, it's a egg chicken issue. Yes, it is. To solve this issue, we use a technique called bootstrapping. Now, what does this technique all about? This bootstrapping technique actually means that we create a base of that new compiler in some lower level language, and we make the further versions of that language in that language itself. Like if there is a compiler of C, we will make the initial versions of C in C and then we will make the further versions of C in C in C. So it has many advantages like the developer community does not need to know two or more languages like one to update the compiler, another to uh, make the libraries. They need to know only one language that they are working on. So and if we are updating the compiler, we are also updating our source, how does our source code works and how does our program works. So now we, as we know that how does the compilers are made, now we should actually need to know how does this base of that uh, programming language is made. To understand this base, I have to know that the compiler has three parts, the lexer, the parser and the interpreter. Now, this one, when we give a code to the compiler to compile it, it actually receives the code as in text form. Now, when it receives the code in text form, how it will know that which one is a keyword, which one is identifier, which one is an operation, which one is a function, which one is a variable. So, to know that, we use Lexer. What does a Lexer do? It actually moves throughout the code by character by character, reading each character and then creating tokens like what is the bit that is a basic token like basic uh, part of a program like if it is an identifier it will return an identifier token if it is an uh, variable it is return an idea variable token if it is a uh, operation it will return an operation token now it returns an array of tokens now how we will know like that if there is an expression c equals to a plus b how we will know that we have to perform a plus b first and then we need to go to c we need to assign this value to c to know that we here comes the work of parser now what does parser say that parser actually goes to the token array of tokens and create and return us a ast now what does this ast means ast actually it means abstract syntax tree it is actually similar to expression tree where will, if there is an expression c equals to a plus b it will return something like this c then equals to then plus then a and b as leaf nodes so it actually tells the interpreter that it at first it needs to perform the plus operation between these two operators and then the, with the value which it will receive it has to put it in c so it is more similar to uh, that of expression tree 
Now, when we have the expression, we need, we know which one to work first, which one we have to work on later. Now, here comes the part of an interpreter. Now, what does an interpreter do? Is actually perform the task as per the ASP. Now, interpreter receives the root node of the ASP and then it transfers from the tree accordingly to give us our required output or the result. So this, this is the full concept of compilers. Now to understand the further parts of the video, you need to understand three things. Program, basic programming and the object oriented programming and Python. Because this, this are the prerequisites because we are going to actually code it out how to make a compiler, we will be going through a code. So let's go to it. So, as you can see, this is our code. So, moving to the top, we have the tokens. Now, these are actually constants which I am using to define the token type. Like, if it can be an integer, different kinds of token, like it can be a float token, it can be a plus, it can be a parenthesis, it can be an identifier, it can be a keyword, it can be a double equals, it can be less than, greater than, it can be a variable, it can be a function. Now, this keywords array actually define which are the keywords in our program so that the programmer does not use it as their variable name or function name. Now, in the token class, now this token class actually represents each token. It has three, as we uh, see the defining or the construction of this token, we see that there are three inputs like type, line, and color. Now, the type stores like which type of uh, token it is, like it, it is an integer, it is a float, or something else. The line stores that on which line was this token actually when the user has given the code and the value like if it is an integer the value will be an integer value if it is a float it will have a float value if it is a string it will have a string value and this is the method part of tokens now we de we are defining an error base class and different error classes so we have in uh, in my programming language I have four kinds of error character error input output uh, syntax error input error and runtime error now this character error actually does occurs when we expect something like when i'm expecting a not equal to then there must be an equal to sign after the not operator but it is actually not present so it shows as a character error well in invariant syntax error as you all know it's a compile time error and the runtime error will be a runtime error and the input error occurs when the, the programmer has opted for an input value but the user is given and has a string value or something like that. Now this position class actually does nothing but it just keeps a track of the index and uh, the line number which at which the lecture, lecture is presently working on. So let's see our lecture class first. As you can see in the lecture class uh, there is uh, one second. Yeah, there is uh, many functions. So let's go through them one by one. This is the constructor. It receives the text of what we have given the compiler as a source code. This advances nothing. It just moves to the next character. Now this make token functions is the most important function of the lexer. It as you can see, it's just uh, skips tabs spaces and uh, new line so that if the as different programmers can intend their program different, in different ways so indentation does not so provide uh, given error yet so that we are skipping all the tabs but this feature is not available in Python because they actually keep track of all that intents to make their code run then it is if the character if it is a receiving a digit it is creating and uh, a number if it is getting a letter it is uh, creating letters identifiers and so let's actually it's uh, it has many other functions like uh, make string make identifiers what this all are doing it's like make string function it whenever it goes to a codes it get all the uh, other characters in a particular string value until it receives another code actually I have just modulated the things not equals to search for an equal to sign after a not I have just modulated the thing you can just put it all in the, the make tokens function and you can work it there but work it in your most comfortable way 
Now, as you can see, there are many kinds of node here: num node, binary operation node, unitary operation node, var access node. Identify table is something different. I will come to it later. Now, these different kinds of node actually tells the interpreter to which operation to perform and how it should be performed. So, first we come to parser and see what the parser. It is receiving the tokens, and in the parser class, the most important. Uh, Function that we have is parse function. Now, what does this parse function is doing? It is searching for an expression. Then we are checking that is does this expression has an error or not. If it has an error, we are returning it. Otherwise, we are checking has the code has ended or there is an end keyword that we have used in our uh, programming language to define the end of a block of code. So, if both any of them matches, then it won't go further. If both of them does not match, it, then it will search for another expression. And then what is it returning? It is returning the next node. Now, what does this next node is having? Next node is having the first expression to ex execute, then the second expression to execute. Now, this is the work of parser. Now, what does our expression is doing? Now, expression our expression is actually searching for keywords from like functions, and then it is going for the syntax of the functions and returning a create function node as you can see it will return a create function node at the end if there is no error so as you can see what does this uh, create function node actually tells the interpreter that now they, they have to create a function or uh, now they have to create a function in their identifier table so as we go ahead we can see it search for print and then it search for let keyword to identify that then we had we need to create a variable or not at the end you can see if no keyword it it find no keyword then it is assigning left to a comparator a com comparison operation now what does a comparison operation if i am if i have an expression like this so i does not want to give this more priority than this so if uh, then there is an expression like this then my interpreter must execute this first then this and then it need to perform this so we i don't want this to give more priority that's why i have given this comparison operator a less priority now in the com as you will go in the comparison operator here you will see i am opting for an uh, arithmetic operator now what does this arithmetic operator is looking it is looking for some plus in a second input and arithmetic operations to be present now from arithmetic you will see i am actually calling for factors now what does this factor now it is the smallest part of an expression which can be an identifier which can be a num number which can be a float or string now in this identifier you will see that i am even searching for if else no Like I am searching for if else, I am searching for for, I am searching for while, I am searching for input. Now why I am doing this? I am doing this because I want to give my user the facility to do actually this. Let a equals to if five equal equals to five, then four and else three and so. as you can see this i am giving my programmer the ability to do this like i can assign the value to a variable or a function like this if uh, i can give a condition for assigning the value this feature will also get in python because in python also they have used if statement in the factors now this is the main part this is the smallest part of the factors now as as you see now we will come to interpret now what the interpreter also have many functions it is getting in initial language it is getting two things the ast and the table now what does this table means its table is the identifier table this stores the context of the program now what does this identifier table stores it actually stores a dictionary of identifiers which stores variables which stores functions and the constants which i want to give to my programmers by default like true false the get function is used to i have created it to get the values from that of that particular variable the update function is to update the value of that variable assign is to assign the variable get function does the similar work but for functions now this actually this stores that stores 
the values or the variables the identifiers in the dictionary now as we see in the interpreter as we see in the interpreter the most important function is our visit function now what we do in visit function in visit function we do nothing but we are just checking that which kind of node we are and then calling functions accordingly now when we are calling that functions accordingly in that function we are performing the operation like if there is a create function we are just assigning that function in that identifier table in the where assign node we are just assigning that variable in our identifier table if there is a uh, input output function we are performing an input output checking the value that the value is matches to the opted value or not otherwise giving an uh, error of unexpected uh, input from the user now in executing we are we actually need to perform like from the table of that inner function we need to connect these two tables like in such a way like the parameters of the parent table matches the parameters of that of the function table like we need to first check the uh, function is defined or not if the function is defined the parameters must have must be match the number of parameters must match then we have to create a new table because as function itself is a different code which needs to be executed and then we are identity then then we are seeing that the new table has a parent and this parent is our this means if there is a block and then there is a function and then this the identified table of this is a parent of the identified table of the this so that when inside the function when we are trying to get a variable it actually it actually first searches the variable inside the function if it does not get it it can search it here also it's actually give the programmer the feature of global variables so as you can see that's it and uh, the in the perform binary operations we are performing actually the binary operation like plus minus equals to etc etc print we are in unitary operations we are actually printing them we are performing the negative unitary operations etc so that was it guys So let's see the output of our uh, programming language which we created for all this time. So, as you can see on the screen, this is just a demo program with functions, if else, for loops, and etc. So, just ex let's just execute it on VS Code. So, as you can see, I'm executing it. So, it shows me the default prints which I gave in the program. It's asking for an integer. I am giving three limits. So, I'm giving some loops and. Uh, Required output which I uh, specified in the code as for for a float it will print me the double of that three point four it is twenty six point five if I input a string it will so many as print two times yes. okay so it is that same right and thank you for watching this video if you do like my work you can support me on Patreon dot com and please leave a thumbs up and a comment down below because the YouTube algorithm works in such a way that it will help me a bit. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel Geek Talks. Thank you. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.